the rise and fall of the blades. There are many that still remember the blades. There are fewer that can pass down their stories, their origins and their downfall. My father could. In his proudest moments he said to me, you keep secrets like the blades. The blades were good at keeping secrets. They didn't write down much. They passed information carefully between their spies in every province to their elite members that protected the emperors. Even amongst their members, they kept much secret. Most associate the blades with their ceremonial Akaviri armor and curved longswords. One can trace the blades back to the fiercest warriors of Akavir, the Dragon Guard. It was there, just as they would do in Tamriel, that they protected rulers and their kingdom. But recent discoveries show it to be much more than that. Many classic texts tell us of adventures to Akavir, known as the Dragonlands of the East. Many from Tamriel have attempted to conquer it, most famously Emperor Yoril V and his 10th legion in the Third Era 288, as documented in the Imperial Dispatch, Disaster at Ionith. Dragons have long been legend in Akavir, and many believe that their brief appearance in Tamriel's history are those that escaped Akavir, for it was there that they were hunted and killed off by the Dragon Guard. The Dragon Guard would follow those that fled to Tamriel in the late First Era. Invading from the north, the Dragon Guard met not only dragons, but the men of Skyrim, who don't meet invasions with pitchers of mead. The Dragon Guard cut a path through Skyrim, and it was not until they were stopped by Remen Cyrodiil during the battle at Pale Pass that the invasion came to an end. It was Remen who united the human lands of Cyrodiil and defeated the Akaviri invaders. Remon is one of the first documented and widely accepted of the mythic dragonborn, those anointed by Akatosh and Alicia themselves. Born with the soul of a dragon, is what his followers would say. Reports differ wildly on the nature of the battle at Pale Pass, but the end result is the same, that the remaining dragon guard, upon hearing the voice of Remon Cyrodiil, knelt and swore their lives to him, their conqueror and saviour. Fragments from the first era text refer to the warriors dropping to their knees saying, We were not hunting, we have been searching for you. They protected Raman with their lives, as well as his descendants, as the Raman dynasty ushered in Tamriel's second era. It was through these years that their reach extended and their order grew to become the Blades. Their conquest of the dragons complete, they only sought to protect the dragonborn and through him, the Empire. They reached their height late during the Third Era, under the rule of the Septim Emperors. Despite their numbers, they kept their secrecy. The most visible and well-documented were their members who personally guarded the Emperor, still wearing the original Akaviri armor. But that was just the tip of the spear, for the Blades were a larger organization, stretching to every corner of Tamriel. These agents were of every race. They were merchants, thieves, craftsmen, mages, and warriors, all acting as spies, protecting the Empire as needed, and operating in secret. They often acted alone, but some fragments speak of them meeting in secret fortresses across the continent. The most famous being Cyrodiil's Cloud Ruler Temple, where they hung the swords of those slain protecting the Dragonborn. Other maps speak of Wind Scour Temple under the great expanse of Hammerfell's Alakir Desert. Skyhaven Temple in the mountains of Skyrim, and Storm Talon Temple east of Wayrest. They were known to have a Grand Master who often lived amongst the people unknown to others. The nature of their communications, meeting places and missions were known only to a few elite members. The only two to know all were the Grand Master himself and the Chronicler, whose only job was to make sure the group's mission was never known, but never lost. With the death of Uriel Septim VII and his son Martin, the Third Era came to a close, with the Blades fortifying themselves deep within Cyrodiil's Cloud Ruler Temple as they waited for a Dragonborn to return when they would be called upon again. The Empire of the Fourth Era no longer saw the Blades openly protecting it or the Emperors. The role is now filled by the Penitus Oculatus, a purely Imperial organization but the Blades continued their secret work to watch for the Dragonborn and guard against future enemies. 
The Blades were among the first to see the signs that the Thalmor of the Altmeri Dominion would not remain isolated within their borders forever. They could do what the Penitus Oculatus, servant to the Empire policy, could not, and thus earned the lasting hatred of the Thalmor. The warnings of the Blades were proved right, as is well known to all. The great war between the Empire and the Thalmor consumed the Empire and nearly destroyed it. Emperor Titus Mede II eventually brokered peace with the Thalmor, but at a price many of us still bear. The reach and destructive nature of the Thalmor is known to many. They are not fools. They knew early on that the Blades were an enemy, so they hunted them throughout the Great War. Some were killed defending their temples, others as they slept in their hideaways alone. Some fought, some ran, some hid, but the Thalmor found them all. There are those that say the Blades still exist around us, in hiding from the Thalmor, waiting as they have done time and time again for a Dragonborn to return, for one to protect, for one to guide them.